Hello and welcome back to part 2 of the dialogue editing tutorial. By now you should have completed Simple Assembly Rough Cuts of Edits 1, 2 and 3. We're going to return now to Edit 1 and just have a look at some techniques how to tighten up the flow of the dialogue. First of all we're going to be removing some sections and then after that we'll have a look at more fine adjustment of cut points with a technique called trimming. First of all let's just remove some areas that we know we don't need and we're going to do that using the Edit Monitor, Transport Control, Mark Buttons and Delete. OK, well let's see that in action. We've got the direct calling action at the top and then we've got a blank area of silence. I want to take some of this out and remove the director's voice. We're going to use the Edit Monitor, Mark Button and we're going to mark a range for deletion. Mark an in point. Again, it's just Mark and Park. Press Play. Watch. I'm going to take it a few frames back there with my nudge frame backwards just as she looks up and then press the delete button. The marked range is removed and discarded and the sequence becomes slightly shorter. And by the way the marks are automatically cleared for you so you're ready to get on with the next bit. Let's go on and have a look at the end of the clip. Monica, did you see? So this section here needs to come out. We've got a bit of audio at the end of this first clip and a bit of incorrect audio at the end of the second clip. I'm going to zoom in slightly so you can see better what I'm doing. Press play. I'm going to stop there, press the mark button, press play. Did you see it? Now I've just overrun there, but I can play backwards by pressing the shift key and clicking the play button on either the source or the record monitors. I'm just going to take it just to about there and remove that section. Let's play onwards and see what's next. Did you see her dress? <laughs> More. So we've got a cough here. I want to get that, and there's the next line coming in here, that's got to go. I'm going to mark an in point, press play. <laughs> More, yeah. And we're going to come in roughly about there, a couple of frames backwards, press delete. Now I can step forward and backwards to the next cut by using the jump buttons on the monitor. Step forward to the next cut, step forward to the next cut, step back. Let's have a look at this cut here and see if anything needs to be removed. Press play. If you ask me. That's quite good. But we'll take it out about there, mark an in point. Press play. <laughs> anyway. We want to come back in somewhere around there. So I'm just going to scrub in my timecode track to about there and press the delete button. Discard that material. I'm going to zoom back out again, play on, see how we're looking at the end of this clip. Anyway, well, she told me once that when she was in her... Now what's going to happen is this clip is actually going to fade out underneath this cutaway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away some stuff, then I'm going to add it back with trimming. Anyway. Let's stop about there, mark it in, step forward to the candle shot, and we just take out all of that. Delete. See how we're looking coming in on the next bit? You know, yeah, yeah, no. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm gonna leave that alone for the moment. Let's close away our source monitor. And now we focus on some fine tuning with trimming. Let's just zoom in and we focus on this first cut here. Now think of trimming as adding film rollers to the beginning or the end of your clips. We're going to roll in the film canister to shorten the media, or we're going to roll it out to extend the media. Now in Lightworks, you enter trim mode by hovering over a cut point and clicking on the left, the centre, or the right-hand side of a cut. First of all, let's look at extending or contracting this first shot. I'm going to click on the left-hand side of the cut, and we enter trim mode. On the left hand monitor you see the outgoing frame of the first shot in yellow. On the right hand monitor 
you see the incoming frame of the green shot. That's going to stay fixed. We've only put our roller on the left hand side, outgoing frame. To modify the cut, press the play button. Did you see her dress? <laughs> and everything unrolls and the shot is extended. Again, you can use your shift and play button to play backwards. <laughs> so crazy. And press stop where you're happy. So I'm going to press stop where I want the cut to be. Monica. Cut, and you can use the frame button nudges to take a couple of frames off there. When you're happy, press the join button to reconnect the cut. Let's have a look at the incoming shot here. I'm going to click on the right hand side of the cut. Now, on the left hand trim view monitor, we see the outgoing shot, of the yellow media, and that's fixed. And we see the incoming frame of the green shot that we're going to modify. When I press play, we can roll the shot in. Did you see her dress? <laughs> and if I press shift and play, we can roll the shot back out again. <laughs> again, I'm going to press play and stop where I want the cut to be. <laughs> and we go there, take a couple of frames there. If you're happy, press the join button. I'm going to continue with the other cuts. Let's have a look at the outgoing shot here. <laughs> More like a birthday suit, if you ask me. Anyway. So those two cuts are okay, I'm happy with that. Now the title comes in over the cutaway. That's a bit too long, I just want to shorten that. If I click and hold with the mouse, I can simply drag that to the left and shorten that. And when I release, we automatically join back up the cut and exit trim mode. Nice neat way to do things quickly. Let's have a look at the incoming area here. I want to shorten this shot, so I'm going to click on the right hand side, all tracks into trim mode, and press play to wind it in a bit. Just about to there. Press the join button. Let's have a look at the last cut. You know, yeah. Yeah, no. Now we could do with just taking off a little bit at the end. Click on the left hand side of the last final cut. Put rollers at the end. Now we're looking at the frame after the end of this sequence. So our incoming next frame is going to be black. I'm going to press shift and the play button to roll in the last shot. Hi. And press play and stop to add the cut point. Play. Yeah. Cut, we'll just take off that last bit of vocal there. Happy with that? Press the join button. So finish tightening up the timing with those two techniques, the extract, delete, marked range, and also use trimming, the outgoing and the incoming trim rollers to fix up the timing. But let's do a bit more with trimming now. Now you can see that all these cuts, the picture and the sound cuts all happen at exactly the same time. In some cases, this is all right, but in other times, we want to split the edits so that the picture comes in early or the sound comes in early. So we're going to delay the cut of picture or sound. To do that, we're going to use a dual roller trim by clicking on the center of the cut point. Now, when I do that, I'm looking at the outgoing frame of the green shot and the incoming frame of the yellow shot. And what's going to happen is each side of the cut is going to be unrolled or rolled up in equal amounts. If I press play, <laughs> more of a birthday suit if you It goes one way. If I press shift and play, <laughs> it goes backwards. <laughs> but you'll notice as I've clicked on the, centrally on the cut that all tracks have gone into trim mode. Let me just undo that. Now that functionality of all tracks going into trim mode is controlled by a timeline setting. If you click on the cogs icon on the top right hand corner of the edit timeline you'll open the edit settings down at the bottom here have a look at the auto unjoin setting by default on lightworks installations that's always set to yes it means automatically unjoin or enter trim mode for all enabled tracks on your edit now if i set that to no look what happens it means that i can click on the cut on v1 and if i drag I can now split the edit timing of the picture and the sound. 
So let's experiment with doing that. So if we go back to the top, what we'd like to do is cut to the picture of somebody else listening while the first actor is talking. So I'm going to move this cut to the left. Auto unjoin is turned off. Click on the cut point. I'm just going to move that backwards just to about there. So it comes in just slightly earlier. Okay, I'm going to give that part to Monica. Did you see her dress? <laughs> And we can do the same for the other cuts. I want this one to come in earlier again. And let's review that. <laughs> More like a birthday suit, if you ask. And again, I'm going to bring in the second actor a little bit earlier. So that as we go through, she looks up. Splitting the cuts in this way is called a J cut or an L cut. And that's denoted by the shape of the cut. So if we go into an extreme version, you can see the L shape described by this yellow shot. If we go the other way, we're actually looking at a J shape described by the green shot. Now the next thing I want to do is extend this audio underneath our title cutaway over here. So that Sophie's going to be talking and she's going to fade out just underneath this area here. Now let's have a look at another technique of choosing exactly which tracks to send into trim mode. Back to the timeline settings cogs, down to auto unjoin and turn that back on again. Now, as you know, if I click on the center cut point here and try and extend the audio, I'm also put V1 into trim mode due to auto unjoin of all selected tracks. However, you can override auto unjoin by holding down the alt key on the keyboard. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and click on the cut here on A1 and add another trim roller still holding the alt key on A2. Now I can press play and just extend that audio. Well, she told me once that when she was in Mexico. And we just take a few frames off, take that section off at the end there. Press the join button. Now this audio area here is going to fade out underneath the candle shot. To add a fade out, to add audio keyframes, I'm going to go to this yellow line on the audio segment. I'm going to right click with the mouse to add a node. Go down to the end, right click and hold and drag a fade out ramp here. And I'm going to do the same on A2. Right click to add the first node, go to the end, right click and hold and drag downwards. And you can see the waveforms have changed and we've added the fade out. So your objectives now are to continue the timing adjustment on edits 2 and 3 in the same way that I've done, using a Mark Park range deletion and trimming. And remember to experiment with the auto unjoin, find out which method you're most comfortable with. Good luck and see you next time. Thanks for watching.